All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Even during the break, the conversation was still continuing. Let's bring them up now so that you can also join in. 224222 is the SMS line. Hashtag is Daybreak. We'd like to sample some of the views on the Mwana Inch's budget and what your concerns are before the 3.02 trillion budget is presented in Parliament tomorrow. Let's get straight into it. You had a question on importation and the taxation. You will answer that and also one more question. Yeah. Start with your name and Hi. which sector. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Charlene. I'm a consultant, just moved back to Kenya from uh, Italy. But my main concern is I understand the government is really trying to help with the housing shortage that is, that is happening to increase growth and also empower the common monainchi. But when you increase taxes to assuming someone who makes 50,000 shillings um, a month, you have the taxing, the housing, all these taxes. Someone has like six children in the house. How is he supposed to support his family and, you know, cater for everything that's going on um, with them. So we need to also create that job opportunity. I know she spoke about um, the Chinese coming into the market. I know recently there was an article on the newspaper about the Chinese now in Gikomba. So basically you're coming from manufacturer to wholesaler to retailer. How are we guaranteed that they're not going to lose out on their jobs in a few months to come when the Chinese takes the whole space? Of, of our common Manainchu who are suffering quietly and there's no one there to listen to their views. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You had a question as well? Uh, hi, my name is Alice Kinya. I'm from Gong Road. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, uh, about first, about the the Barabara Queen Alimo and Gong Road, mm. Paul was in Tanzania. Mm. Mm. Yes. See, Daniel Ijibiwa. And I'm sure the wise members can understand mm -hmm. Kiswahili. Yes, of course. by all means. Kwanza, <laughs> <laughs> kuna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hii huyu mama ameongelea hii anjua kali. Hiyo yeah. ya wa Chinese kutengeneza I mean ku subcontract mm -hmm. hizo milango. Kama hapo Ngong Road wakati walikuja sure wali subtract. Ba, wali subcontract. Mm -hmm. But sasa swali ni hii 100 profit kwa mlango. Na wako wafanyi biashara kama Ngong Road I don't know how many thousands. Hii 100 kwa mlango na hizi milango hata mkijaribu kushia Okay. All right. Let's move on to the other side. Yes. Thank you. Um, Gladys Ogola, uh, with the security and uh, representative of Kenya National Private Security Workers Union. Oh, Mishimua, my question is, uh, every now and again, we always feel as security people that we are being ignored because um, we have the small companies that are still not paying the minimum wage that is needed. And actually, they, they can't overtake every, compa every company all over the country, leaving the big companies with the less assignments and less, uh, less places to work. And uh, uh, another question, I would just want to ask what the government is doing to ensure that they pay the minimum wage, or if they don't pay the minimum wage, their license are supposed to be taken. Actually, that's what Mr. Fazo told us sometimes back in January 18th. But that hasn't happened until today. And they're still taking the big assignments. They're still leaving the, the big company like G4S, KK, and other multinational companies without jobs. So I just want to, I want to ask, what are they doing? And another thing, I, I, this three points, something trillion is a lot of money. And with the living standard we have right now, we as the security personnel, we ask for a living wage because if he say the minimum wage that security personnel always get is 13,000, which I believe maybe can be your breakfast or a sitting allowance, that is a very small money for people with family out there. So we are asking for a living wage and we are asking the government to help with that. All right, and I think that's a very pertinent very, point to very, start from. Yeah, yeah you, you, I think you should respond to that. Let me address even before that one. Yeah, but first of all, uh, because I don't have in my constituency G4S, I don't have KK, so I want the small uh, guy who I'm going to give U.S. of funds to compete with G4S, so as also I can empower. Because now, when you say I don't give, now I give only to G4S, and uh, I don't have G4S in in Gong Road, but there's a guy there who you know the the credit that my brother here is talking about. He needs to get that credit and say, Mimi, I'm going to hire. So let's, let's, let's look at it this way. We are not going to grow economy and jobs just by big business. We are going to grow economy and jobs. If I have like a small company there, which I have funded through my ways or there, yeah, yeah, who is employing his fellow youths, 
there. And actually, sorry, uh, madam, but I want, I want as many Kenyans to compete with G4S. Yeah. So that we can be able to create jobs and get those jobs down there. But on the minimum wage, I am, I am totally with you on the minimum wage. Yes. And we need to um, task. And this is something I think Honorable uh, Lesoda and myself will take up with the Labour Committee mm. to create mechanisms for uh, monitoring. And also, we look at, uh, for example, the office of the Bootsman. I don't know if you know of that office, which you want to strengthen. So that it is not you, if you are not meeting the minimum wage, when you are going to be you are going to be victimized. So we are going to empower the office of the Bootsman so they can be able to carry out random audits to be able to see that uh, people are complying with that. But let me come to, to my sister's issue here about taxation. You know the big problem? All of you, I don't know, is any one of you here employed by government? Let me tell you what the problem in this country is. That there is real shillings, Unasikia. Half of it goes to people who are employed by government. Recurrent expenditure. Recurrent expenditure. Mishahara, Mandazi, travel, Maua. And cars. And you know how many they are? In a country of 50 million people, they are not one million. And we have to ask ourselves a question as Kenyans. For how long are 49 billion people going to carry the burden of one, one million? Yes. Because that is where the trouble lies. I'm telling you today, kila mtu wa serikali, tuwele kwa kila idara. If there are three drivers, back in Moja, two of them go to Juwakali. Go and make doors with Pamela. Yeah? Yeah? Until we have that courage. And we remove politics from all this when we want to do civil service reform. Unless we do that, and that is why I want to be president. Because I'm going to show okay. you. Yeah? <laughs> no campaign yeah? strategy on democracy. Let's bring it. To, to face the reality this. and tell people, yeah. look, it is not the end of life okay. if you are not employed by government. Because our expenditure will come down, yeah. you will go out there, you will create jobs, you will employ other people, mm. and tax, the tax base, taxation will Good. come down and the economy okay. will grow and jobs will grow. Honorable okay. Suda, there's another Long concern the about the road construction. I think it came up from the Ngong, the guys who deal with the furniture along Gong Road. Yeah. All right, if I got the question, you're asking where the, you'll be moved to or what is yeah, the I issue? Have um, the microphone, microphone. The question basically was where we'll be moved to or if there's any other plan for, for us, you understand? Because now, if you displace like a uh, more than one, uh, 1,500 uh, people, 1,500 yeah. uh, people, you know, it's, it's, a, it's it really a, a big problem to us. So the plan to have in a different place yes, where you that, can continue your we'll, business. We'll, that's, you know, if, if the government could have like a, a, a program, you know, yeah. you bring up Oto Jokali, Utengenezekama place moja, so that All the mic close at your mouth. You know where to go. If you want a bed, you know where to go. Okay. If you want anything, you know where to Karibisha go. Karibisha mic. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, uh, rather than, you know, uh, yeah. us being scattered. Like okay. wengine wakoku, wengine wakoku. All right. Uh, ile barabara kibomolewa, surely we don't have anywhere to go. Okay. Mm. And, 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 and I agree, and I agree with you, and not just a place, but also a place where it's accessible, where also you can continue to, to make business. Because where, where you are on the road, probably, you know, when we are driving past or anybody is driving past can easily access you. So access you uh, like where you are right now. So I think that is an issue that definitely has to be picked up both by the county government and also by, by the national government because they are the ones who are doing the road. And just to pick up on what you're saying and what we said we were just talking about before we went for the break, when we were on break, there is one link that is missing in this show. Yeah. We are here as legislators who for s who see the budget and everything when it's being done. Here are those who consume the budget and the policies that we make in Parliament. But there's an arm which executes what we pass and also executes directly on what uh, affects the, 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 affects, uh, the, 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 the public. Yeah. So it is important that they also come and tell us this is what we're planning to do or what this is we're doing. For example, we have said as a budget committee and even as parliament, for example, on the pending bills, that before you start any other project or before you start any other program, could you please first complete or pay mm. 
the the people who have already worked yeah. or the people who have done work before starting another project because that is what is is really uh, uh, taking us back and we need to ask the questions around it but the implementers so we pass it in in parliament it's there now in, in our policy but the implementers once they get the money and you even wonder how they spent money which they did not have yeah. uh, you know because then why is that a pending bill and so they also have to be in this conversation yeah. so that we all discuss yeah. the policy makers <laughs> those who consume and those who implement the policies that then but, are but made. But then our funders, your oversight role come in because <laughs> the Monainchi elected you to represent their view. And they exactly, and I agree, with, I, ex I agree with what the lady has said yeah. on issue of, of the wage bill, uh, of the minimum um, uh, wage. Yeah. Yeah? And just as my colleague has said, we will pick it up. And by the way, when we say we'll pick it up, we'll ask the question in Parliament. Yeah. We'll ask that committee. And the committee will sit down and come up with a framework. But at the end of the day, there's that implementer who has to then follow up, as you said, their licenses to be withdrawn, they, to make sure that it is happening yeah. for everybody. So they also they have, will they play have a role, role to, play. to oversight okay. those ministries, to oversight the committees. We do that, and that's why you see your representatives actually asking those questions. Okay. But uh, most of the time, the, the implementers, and I'm um, sorry to say this, would sit in their offices in Nairobi. They have, and that's why they come up even with the policies on SMEs without really interacting mm. with you to know what exactly needs to be happened. Or in some corner in my constituency in Samburu, mm. they have no idea what my ladies with the beads yeah. really are, are, going, are going through at that point. Mm. And so we have to have that conversation okay. round. A 360 just to ensure conversation. A 360 conversation. All right. Let's bring in more questions here. Really briefly, because we're running out of time, I'll start with you at the back. Yes. Thank you. My name is Benjamin Osilwa yes. from uh, the private security industry mm -hmm. from Wells Fargo Company. Yes. I have two questions for Waheshimiwa here on the budget that is coming. Yes. Number one, we've seen incidents of insecurity and the first people to be reached or the first people to raise the alarm are the, the private security officers. Okay. Recently we saw it in uh, Dusit. And I want to appreciate uh, greatly what the guards did there. Okay. Because they blocked the entry of that car. That is why one of our in charge went and swiped. He had the car that opens the rear gate. Mm. And a lot of people escaped from there. Okay. Now, besides, apart from the training that we get at the company level, in our trainings when you are joining the uh, industry, what is the government thinking or planning to do in terms of empowering or pushing in more training to the security, private security guards so that they can work so well with the higher arm of the, uh, in the security industry? Okay. Then uh, question number two is uh, on the issue of uh, SACOS. I'm very sure when equity came up with the uh, agency in Mitani, a lot of people enrolled and it really boosted the circulation of funds in the country. Now, my question is, this is a sector that has more than close to 800,000 employees. Mm -hmm. What is the government doing in ensuring that it pumps uh, money into circles that the lending can be very fair to the people okay. on the ground. All right. Because we have the Walinzi Circle, which is purely designed to cater and address issues of security guards. All right. Thank you to Mr. President, because he launched that circle. Okay. And up to now, we want to know, from the budget that is coming to be read tomorrow, has anything been factored into the circle issue? Okay. Thank you. All right. Next. Thank you. My name is Adna Medimo from the business community. So this is my question. Uh, of late you've seen we've had a lot of uh, backlog at the ports. I think majorly it's because we have very little or less mark, mark, workmanship there. So does the budget factor in that? Do we have like maybe we'll receive more people working there because that will also create job op opportunities and for us we'll have a uh, Sorry, we'll have our items coming in in time. Okay. And then secondly, I have a second question. Very fast. Uh, the government also wants us to create jobs mm -hmm. within the country. 
does the budget have a location for that? That as a young person with an idea, I can approach a certain office yeah. and get funding and get support until I have my dream fully achieved out there. Okay, I think the second question had already been answered on yeah, the Ajira funding, but let's bring another one. Yeah, go ahead. Name okay. and which sector? My name is Anila Inakini. Yes. Um, into imports and logistics. But my question is um, the regularization of petroleum products. Is there money allocated in the budget for this petroleum product? Because you find once it goes up, the economy, it's down. Like mm -hmm. everything goes up. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another question. Um, when had talked about uh, Chinese being given the contract for the housing project. Why Chinese? Why not put enough funds for the business community so that Anilane can apply for this loan, be given this project, and uh, employ others so that at least I make other Kenyans pay tax and put food on their table? Okay. Mm. All right, let's take another question. I'm trying to make sure all of you get a chance to ask their <laughs> questions, then you'll respond to them. Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Simaloi, importation, but I think uh, all has been said on importation. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should talk on behalf of my mother. Okay. Uh, you get uh, the Maasai women with the beads. They'll come all the way uh, from, uh, assume, uh, Kiserian, mm -hmm. Kwenda Nyuma. Mm. Hold They'll the microphone closer. The Hold uh, the microphone closer, yeah, there. That's transport. Okay. They come all the way. Uh, they use maybe 500 shillings on transport only, up to where they are, up to where the Maasai market is. Then they come, they don't sell anything. Mm -hmm. They go back. Mm -hmm. Maybe tomorrow they come, uh, they spend, uh, maybe the next time, mm -hmm. they, come, uh, they come, maybe they sell one or two. Yeah. Uh, they are behind the, their budget. Okay. Maybe the government should see or the when should maybe consider them or find a way they'll help them. The local mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. <coughs> Very briefly. Yeah, my name's are Meshakal Karakaja. I work in private sector for Mokan Security yeah. Services. Yeah. And uh, I'm a union representative from Kenya National Private Security Workers Union. Okay. My question to Eshimiwa is in the private sector security now, since it's dependent we have a graduation of every sectors. Now, the bill was passed where we were supposed to be armed, where we are supposed to be trained, then we be armed so that in the case of any terrorist, we also take uh, ourselves, we normally how to deal with those uh, thugs okay. or a terrorist. Like other countries like Uganda, Ethiopia, we have private security guards who are armed. Okay. But here in Kenya, Mwishmiwa, you tell us, you take us for granted. Why? Because <laughs> during the election, you come to us, you promise us a lot of things. But now, you are saying that you can employ where you can afford. Okay. How can you pay a cut 5,000 or 8,000? And that cut has a family like you. No even house allowance. The reason you added yourself 250,000 house allowance. And the cut which is money you are, you are resident is being paid 5,000 or 10,000. Let us be human. Also, when the budget is going to be reached tomorrow, we have over 500 security, 500,000 security officers in the Republic of Kenya. We have less than 100,000 police officers. We'll see, we'll see the, maybe 10 billion set for police officers. And the private security officers, nothing. Okay. And we are going to the same shop to buy the hunger. Okay. Now Kenya are crying of hunger. Because now Unga is 150. Where goes to buy in the supermarket, I also go there. And last year, you read the budget. Where farmers in Rift Valley were crying, there was no place to sell their meats. Now Kenya are, dry, dry, are, dry, they are dying for hungers. And the government, how is it that the budget was read? Was no any money set aside for, for budgeting for this agriculture for food? You know very well. We security officers, we are uh, fond of eating ukal so that I can manage your place. <laughs> our right. cars are an hour okay. going on without food. Okay. And our MP are there just mm -hmm. relaxing. Okay. So All I right. want you, Mishmiwa, to tell us <laughs> how is it that the budget for the previous government, the let me say Joma Kinyata and the Moi, tomorrow was like a whole day. 
where the budget was going to be read. Everybody was near the radio or the TV want to listen. How is it that now that this budget has come irrelevant? Because okay. it has no impact for common man mm -hmm. Okay. So you as Mwishmiwa, what are we expecting? Are we as common man angel from Kibira Kawangwari? What is the impact shall we have? Because right. when the budget is read, we have just increase of things. Okay. No any decrease. Not any no decrease. decrease. All right. Mm. Let's take another comment Thank back you. there really fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, by name, I'm called Yongo Lincoln from KK Security and uh, Union Representative, Chief Shop Steward at KK. Uh, the concerns that have been raised by my colleagues are valid and genuine to our extent at the private sector. Mwishimio, you've talked about uh, encouraging competition within the sector. But uh, there is one serious, uh, uh, there's one serious uh, negativity that it brings in at the sector. One, uh, this competition does not bring proper balancing of the whole sector. Mm -hmm. These small companies come in with uh, mega pay. They do not implement the minimum wage. There are no allowances. The, the, the Ascaris are really suffering in that line. Mm. Yes, it's good to encourage competition, but mm. then where does that leave these other companies that have already invested a lot and uh, that have already also gained much in it? Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, when we are going to talk about uh, the minimum wage uh, uh, to make sure that it comes back to... Lift your microphone wage. slightly higher. Yeah. To living wage. Yeah. Uh, Briefly. The, there is this part of uh, the, 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 the uh, constitution that states that uh, basic house allowance should be 15% of the basic. Now, when you bring in this issue of competition, somebody earning a salary of 5,000 or 10,000 and less will have an house allowance that will not even help pay that house that he's living in. These are our houses, we normally have a term that we call them self-confused in a manner that uh, you, you, you spread your arms, you reach all sectors of the, the house. But then, uh, this house allowance, could it also be changed back to living house allowance? Okay. Because currently the minimal pay that we have at these places that we live in, the common monainchi, you will not find a better house that's self, that self-confused which is not less than 5,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Only by to finish all of that them, line then again, respond to all of them. In that can't, line again, can't, can't, in that li price. living wage, mm. transport in this country is a big problem. Mm. Okay. We guard and we man very important places, very important people. We are expected to perform at our best. Mm. Now, the query is, I walk all the way from Kawangware to Gigiri to guard a, 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 a certain resident. I walk all the way from uh, 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 Kangemi to come and guard a, a, a business premise here in town. Now, this, this me walking is for me to ensure that my budget will help me to mm. run through the month. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to squeeze in myself to make sure that my family gets something. Okay. Okay. Remember, this balancing, uh, this sector has also created jobs to an extent that those who've, who are, currently we have those who are educated, who have higher certificates, who've also come in because of lack of employment from the other sectors. Okay. Now, how do we help balance this issue of transport? Okay. Can you also factor it in so, so as to also bring something like living transport alliance in All it? Right. All right. Now, uh, my last take. Uh, we are really running out of time, and yeah, I need two yeah, of them just, to just give one, their please. comments. Really this fast. balancing, yeah. uh, this balancing that you are, uh, we are crying out for in the issue of uh, bringing in competition. Are you aware that these small companies, some of them, and uh, uh, close to all of, almost all of them, do not pay taxes, and this also really majorly affect these other companies that have invested here mm. and are not uh, 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 are getting this serious competition from them. Okay. That's the thing. All right, so much all right, all right, right. Let's get a really quick uh, question there. Two more questions and we take a break. Yeah. Uh, my name is Kenneth Onyango, yes. uh, the Secretary General for the Boda Boda Association of Kenya. Okay. Uh, mine first uh, is to maybe ask Kenyans first to pray for our legislators so that uh, maybe uh, something will dawn up on their minds to give priority to the issues affecting Kenyans. Okay. Because them, they feel that they are very special when they are in those bungies. Sababu, 
any single time. They feel pressed. They cannot feel they are uh, uh, guzzling uh, vehicles. They think of uh, just increasing their salaries. But that one all said and done. Let me come back to the issue of the border border people. Uh, we have uh, we've been told to not talk analog to not a digital. Yeah. So there is a digital thing in the market today about uh, uh, the online uh, taxis, the online uh, border border, yeah. and all that. Mm -hmm. These companies. I don't know why the, our legislators are not uh, really thinking that it is important to really uh, uh, regularize the way they are doing their job. Okay. Because, for instance, just imagine a border border operator will pick a passenger from the CBD all the way to Kawangwari. And by reaching there, when you end your trip, the total amount that the customer is supposed to pay is 200 shillings. Okay. The company is charging 25%. Uh, ta tax on that 200 shillings. Yeah. You have not factored in fuel, you have not factored in the wear and tear of that uh, motorcycle yeah. and all that. Okay. And these companies keep on doing all this and uh, our legislators who are supposed really to uh, factor in the issues affecting these uh, border border people, yeah. they are very silent. Uh, that is one. Number two, uh, I'm t I, wa I want to, when they are talking about the budget, let them, let them factor in the appetite of our government to keep on doing borrowing every now and then. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. these are the issues that are affecting our people. Mm -hmm. Una borrow, una borrow, una borrow, mbaka sasa, wewe mwenyewe unaitua borrow. <laughs> sasa, these things are affecting us na tuna suffer. Okay. Because at the end of the day, unasikia mtoto ata ule asaie mimba ijatungwa. Yeah. Tahari ya anadaiwa 70,000. Na hata ajaingia in this country. Okay. So, the last thing, sisi tunatoka from the lake. Yeah. The other day I had President Uhuru mm -hmm talking about uh, kama samaki ni mbaya, inatoka China, ya wachana unai. Mm. But that fish is still coming here. Okay. And we have our mothers still selling fish. Na hawa watu wanakuuza samaki, samaki ya yuezi nuliwa, okay. just because there's a cheap fish coming from China. All right. And our members of parliament in their 350 in that bunge are very silent. Okay. Our people are suffering, my friend. All right. And lastly? Majina angu na itua faith. Mimi ni kwa kwa sekta ya poda boda. Ningependa kuuliza mwishmi wa hivi sasa kama mimi msichana nafanya poda boda. Kuna wasichana wenzangu, wangependa kuingia kwa hiyo sekta na awana uwezo, awana pesa ya kuenda training, na awana pia piki piki. Mwishmi wa wange wasaidia chani, mimi natoka kibera. Ok. Yeah. All right. And on that note, I have to take a quick break. When we come back, there are several issues that have come up. Security training, the circles, port congestion, petroleum product prices and transport, local construction and uh, contractors, training, the guards, taxes payment, apps registration and regularization of the prices that you're talking about, importation of fish and empowerment. They'll try and summarize all that in the next five minutes when we come back from the break. And I also read some of your tweets as soon as we return.